This is the first time I've ever talked to him, and I'm almost tongue-tied. Charlie Daniels, he needs no introduction. But the best part is he's always loved America. He's always defended the Bill of Rights and Constitution, including the Second Amendment. And now he's really coming out against the globalists, the New World Order, Agenda 21. And I was just talking to him in the last two or three minutes before we went live here. Uh, Charlie Daniels of charliedaniels.com. He's on tour nationwide right now. But he told me he's not here to talk about that. He's here to talk about Agenda 21 and a new documentary that he's voiced called uh, Behold a Pale Horse on the Second Amendment and more. Mr. Daniels, great to have you here with us. Thank you very much. And it's good to be with you. And uh, uh, that's, you know, everybody needs to be talking about Agenda 21. This is one, another one. You know, one of the things that really scared me and should scare everybody is the way this health care bill got pushed through is you could wake up one morning and after a midnight session of Congress, we could be, there could be, I mean, no telling what could be done. And this Agenda 21 is an evil, diabolical thing. It is global in, in, um, in scope, and everybody needs to know about it. I think people know about it. We've been armed about it. Well, you write about it at charliedaniels.com. Tell us about your you know, political awakening that's, I guess, decades old, but uh, currently what you're most focused on. And uh, let's talk about Agenda 21 and why people should be concerned about it. Well, let me, let me just read a little thing here from Agenda 21. The American system of justice must be changed to conform to the rest of the world, and there must be a shift in attitudes, individual wants, needs, and desires are be conformed to the views and the dictates of government planners, in the process of implementing sustainable development, individual rights will have to take a back seat to the collective. That's for starters. That If that shocks anybody, then you should dig a little deeper into this thing. And if I just go look it up. Don't take my word for it. Just go look it up. It's just the information, they've been pretty bold about it, I will say that. And the information is readily available on the Internet. This is a, this is a thing that, you know, I mean, it goes on into no individual ownership of property. Uh, I heard a thing the other day. I raised I raised farm animals. I raised cows and horses. And there's a, there was a bill that passed. Uh, I didn't know it had passed at the time, but it was called the Food Protection Act. That might not have been the, the exact. Yeah, the Food right Safety right. Act. Food Safety Act. Food Safety Act. Right. And I called uh, we, our two senators. I called. It was in the Senate at the time, and I called. Senator Lamar Alexander's office, and I called Senator Corker's office. And I said, I, I asked it, I, of course, I didn't talk to either one of them, but I talked to their age. And I asked it, guy, it had already, I didn't know, I thought it was on the floor. It had passed. Senator Alexander had voted for it. I called Senator Corker's and I, I asked the guy, I said, what about the small farm? Oh, Senator Alexander would never do anything to hurt, hurt farmers. Called Senator Corker's office. Well, Senator Corker voted against it. Now, you know, what, what, what's the deal here? If it's good for the state of Tennessee, why would one senator vote for it and one vote against it? The thing about it to me is this, and what people don't realize is that it has to be brought home to people. You say, okay, if, if, if you know, things go south, I got an acre of ground, I go ahead and plant a garden. I'll get me a cow, a couple of pigs, and some chickens. No, you won't, because under the Food Protection Act, they could come in and say, you can't grow anything because you're spreading bad stuff into the food supply. I saw a thing the other day about mad cow disease in, in California. It come in, okay, you're, you're endangering the health of all the animals in the country by your animals, so you can't grow your animals anymore. That that's, sounds very, very far-fetched, but that is the scope of Agenda 21. Agenda 21 wants to reduce the population of the planet Earth by some, I'm afraid to even say it because I, 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 it really makes me sound crazy, but some tremendous event, Earth is God to these people, and they're, you know, we're mistreating the Earth as evil human beings. The Bible says God gave, you know, he gave this Earth to man Dominion. To, to subdue and the animals on it, and everything on it. And it, Earth is not God. I love the Earth. I'm a very earthy sort of person, but it is not my God. It is not a God. It doesn't have any power. And we have mistreated it. I know we've mistreated it. But it's, the Earth is perfectly capable of refurbishing itself. I was about to it's say, Charlie, uh, Ch Charlie Daniels, our guest, 
they don't care about the environment, these globalists. They've got a lot of people that, that follow them that do, that are misguided. It's all about a power grab. Under Agenda 21, Obama can shut down coal power plants that his buddies don't own, and he's done it. And then that makes General Electric and others, who, by the way, are tax-exempt under this fraud, they make giant profits. It's about monopolies. And when you talk about the Food Safety Act, you're right. Big Pharma and Big Agro wrote it to shut down family farms. I mean, look at them going after the Amish. I'm just backing you up here, Charlie. Look at them going after people with lemonade stands. Look at them going after gardens. The system does not want us self-sufficient. Well, you know what the next move's going to be, don't you? It's going to be coming after your gun. Oh, yeah. There is something afoot here right now. I don't know exactly what it is, but there's something. And the one thing that really scares me is the fact that we are one Supreme Court justice away from Obama doing just about any damn thing he wants to do. I mean, if you can't get it through the Congress, the con Congress and Senate would never have enough guts to try to take people's guns away from them. They would not do it. They know it would be political suicide, but... If it's done through the Supreme Court, it becomes the law of the land. I tell you, it ain't going to sit well down my way at all. It ain't going to sit well. But if they come out and people say, well, I will not give them my gun to take about one or two Ruby Ridges and Wacos to convince people, hey, it ain't worth it. You know, and that's that's how deep this thing goes. It's, you know, it, it's, it scares the heck out of me. Now, I'm 75 years old. You know, I mean, I don't know if I'll live to see this stuff implemented or not, but I got a kid and I got grandkids, and I don't want to see them live in a world that Big Brother runs, and you got to worry about some Nazi-type SOB come knocking on the door in the middle of the night and taking you to task about some opinion that you have. A hate crime opinion. You know, to me, what is a hate crime? I mean, you know, if you kill somebody, you must hate them. <laughs> I mean, how many exactly. times do you kill somebody? If you hate somebody, if it's a hate crime, do you kill them twice? What is it? You know, what's the difference? So, you know, I, this stuff, this, these little things in this Obamacare thing that was passed. We have a congressman named Bart Gordon in Tennessee that he was not going to run again. He voted again. He voted for the Obamacare knowing that his constituency did not want it. He had disappeared. Nobody even knows where he's at. I tried to call him out. He owes it to the people who put him in office to come out and tell us why he voted for it. And now we see Obama, Charlie Daniels is our guest right now, giving 2,000-plus companies waivers. So, again, his buddies get waivers from what he does. That's total discrimination. But going back to the Second Amendment, as you know, I know you're a big supporter of them, uh, the NRA... Uh, and, 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 and they're usually pretty you know, conservative about what they say. They have the intel, and the Washington Times reported on this last year, that in his second term, uh, he is going to try to ban semi-autos. And then we got documents that he told uh, the, the Brady campaign, don't worry, I'm going to do it, quote, under the radar. And, re and remember that tape that got recorded, he you know people have, where he said, yeah, these Bible-hugging, you know, gun-hugging, uh, bitter clingers, and so absolutely, sir, they are coming after our guns. What about Fast and Furious, where Obama shipped guns into Mexico, and CBS got the memos to blame the Second Amendment? Well, I, you know, uh, I think Eric Holder, for the two things, he should have been, either if he did that, he should be impeached and run out of office. He claims he didn't know about it. If he did, he should be run out for incompetence. How do you cross guns into a sovereign nation across international borders, and nobody knows about it except the peons that work in the thing. Now, just tell me, how, did, how do you do that? If the Obama administration is that incompetent, if they can do that, if they can carry guns across state lines, I mean, across international borders and give them to people, or, I mean, in essence, that's what happened. It's not that they didn't actually carry them across themselves. I mean, once, and you don't know about it, it's going on in your department, will you fire everybody in your department if you, if they, you know? But this guy knew about it. He had to know about it. There's no way Holder didn't know about that thing. I don't care what he says. And I honestly, and I will accuse him of lying if he says he don't know anything about it. He knew it. He knew it early on. He didn't do anything about it. He's such an arrogant SOB that he thinks that anything he does, he can get away with. And, you know, this is just any other administration would have fired him two years ago. And he, this guy's wreaking havoc with America. He's wreaking havoc in, in, in Arizona. People knew what was going on in Arizona. I met the family of a rancher, a third generation or so rancher in Texas who was killed by people coming across the border. 
I mean, this is a family. This is a good American family that, been, that make a good, honest living off the land and are good people. And their father and their husband have been killed by these people who come across the border. This is what's happening in, all along the border. You don't hear about it. But every time somebody comes across, uh, some of these people come across, certainly they come across there. They just want to make a living. Okay, you, you want to make a living, you want to do it, go do it like everybody, my people did when they came over from Ireland and other people when they came from Germany and Israel and all these places that immigrated here. Why? Just because they live next to us. People from Canada can't do that. People from Canada can't walk, walk across the border. This is so daggone totally political and so basic spending and so, you know, a contingency thing that, we well, we can get this many voters. We get... What? Tell me something. How can you go into a bank and cash a check and it makes you put out a, a picture ID? I can't get your plane without putting a picture ID. I can't vote in my state. And they know who I am. I vote the same polls all the time. But you got to present that ID before they're going to let you vote. And you mean to tell me that it's right to let people go vote and we don't even run their citizens? Well, Charlie, as not? you know, uh, all over the country, right here in Austin, they let the illegals basically vote they let them get bank accounts with no id but i've got to go show three sometimes at my bank the point is is that the government elite are on top the illegals are second citizens are third class and the government just ignores laws whenever they want uh, it's totally lawless this is globalism now talking about agenda 21 and this whole world government situation i'm seeing a huge awakening arizona's on the verge of passing it another state has passed a law against it uh, other states are passing laws against the NDAA to secretly arrest Americans. It does look like there is an awakening happening. And to go back to that song you had about, you know, America waking up and getting, you know, together uh, again, you know, we damn sure fooled you. I think we're on the cusp of another big awakening. I certainly hope you're right. I hope you're right. I was, I was involved in the National Day of Prayer, you know, Yesterday, and I was making speeches, and one of the big things I was talking about, the further away we get from God, the more lost we get. And, I mean, it's just a, it's, it's an absolute fact. That, and, and this thing of uh, being upset when you see a cross somewhere or something, and this little handful of people want to remove, you know, and they'll tell you, these pe people will tell you now, just rank and file citizens, well, this constitutional separation of church and state, it's not in the Constitution. It says nothing about separation of church and state. It says Congress shall pass no law concerning religion. That's that right. Is, Congress that can make no law, and they, and they take a letter from Thomas Jefferson saying he didn't want to have one church, a uh, one state religion, and they twist it so instead the government runs religion, and they say that's the Constitution when that's the opposite. Government cannot touch it, cannot do anything, zero. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Charlie Daniels, you are absolutely on target. Well, you know, the, 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 that part of the law and the Constitution was to protect the church from the, from the government, not the government from the church. And it was, it's all twisted around. But, you know, if we start talking about, you know, things that offend you, I think stuff all the time has been me, but I'm not going to go out and do a protest about it because I, you know, I don't, I don't like it. If other people want to, you know, have lewd pictures up and that sort of thing, I don't have to look at. It. I, can walk, I can walk right by it. Don't bother me. Why can't they do the same thing with the cross? It's like these people just go around and look for little things that. And what the, the situation is? It's not separation of church and state. It's separation of God and state. That's what they want to do. Well, sir, as you know, they want to replace it with this fake environmentalism, Agenda 21. They admit in the U.N. they want a global religion. They said that at the last big U.N. summit that Lord Moncton and uh, others that were there saw and got the documents on. This is a cult. And you notice it's just Christianity. They're even telling people not to wear shirts with a cross on it in the mall now. It's an idea that you don't have freedom of speech in this country. Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com. We have for 
freedom of speech in this country, and I will wear any dead blame thing I'm pleased to. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's just a situation. No, I, I hope people, people listening, people don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated by this stuff. That, that, that. The biggest part of these things that you're hearing are not law. They're not law in this country. Separation of church and state is not law. It's not constitutional. Uh, this thing, Agenda 21, that we're, we're talking about, please don't take my word for it. I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to believe it. So go look it up on your Internet. Go check it for yourself. It is very real. It's been going on since back in the 70s. Some of the most powerful people in the world are connected to it and endorsing it and promoting it. And the U.N., which in my book should be the bill that should be pushed into the East River or turned into a homeless hotel and run them people out of here. Let them go to Paris. Uh, it's just a toothless debating society, anti-American debating society, I should say. Can you, you imagine these idiots running anything? They can't find their way to the bathroom. And they want to run, they want to take over our national parks. They want to say what we can do with our food chain and what kind of animals we can raise and this sort of thing. It ain't, it's just like you said a while ago, this is total power grab, total control. Expanding on that, uh, break down what you cover in the film Behold a Pale Horse. Well, it, it, this basically could be pale, uh, uh, Behold a Pale Horse goes into Agenda 21. It explains it more fully. It talks about the things that are going on that have been going on and where they're headed, uh, how far this thing goes. It talks about it's about a a global, and I, I, I hesitate to use the word conspiracy because it's been so overused and so, but let's, let's say a, a, a lot of people in the world, very powerful people, presidents, high politicians in other places, the biggest bankers in the world, uh, the media moguls, the, the people that basically run the big media, that run the, 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 the networks, the governments, the industry, the big industry, the big banks. They Charlie, have stay there. So, sorry to interrupt you. we got a break. I want to come back and get into this. And it's a local okay. Fredericksburg, uh, Central Texas filmmaker, and it's got Joel Skousen, Edwin Vieira, Larry Pratt. Man, all these great people in it. Of course, it's narrated by the one, the only, Charlie Daniels, who's on with us right now. CharlieDaniels.com's his site. My site's InfoWars.com. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at InfoWars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure. But if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. By the way, Behold, A Pale Horse with Charlie Daniels just came out, and my crew reminded me, hey, the, the guy that made that lives out in Fredericksburg. He wanted you to be in it. That's why everybody's in it but you, and it just fell through the cracks, just like Aaron Russo tried to get me in America, freedom to fascism. I have got to start being in these films, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. I hear it's powerful. Folks can just Google Behold, A Pale Horse film uh, and uh, find it out there, or, or Behold, A Pale Horse, Charlie Daniels, and not confuse it with the book that's out there by William Cooper. And uh, I can't wait to, to see it and uh, and certainly have the filmmaker on, another great Texan out there. Finishing up with Behold a Pell Horse, Charlie has agreed to stay with us 20 minutes of the next hour to take calls on you know, any issue you want to raise for him. 800-259-9231 on this Friday edition, 800-259-9231 to talk to the legendary Charlie Daniels. Doesn't get any more country than that, doesn't get any better fiddling than that. And uh, he joins us again right now. Uh, uh, briefly, getting back into Behold a Pell Horse, and then I've got a question for you about where you see this country going in the future. Charlie Daniels. An awful lot of that depends on, um, 
you know, what happens in this next election, in my in my opinion. Uh, I personally think if Obama gets elected again and gets any kind of, uh, unless uh, the other side gets, and I'm not a Republican or a Democrat, I don't claim to lead the city party. Uh, I, I just can't see, I can't see any good coming out of it. If you stop and figure, you cannot get out of debt by spending money. And this debt has got to be tackled at some time or other. Our entitlement thing has to be tackled at one time or another. The country's just going to go broke. And, uh, you know, this, uh, we got to see what happens and, and hopefully make some gains and, and build on, on that. But the whole thing about it is, like I said, that, you know, the further we get away from God, the worse off this country gets. And I just, that was a national day of prayer yesterday, and there were a lot of millions of people around the country that were praying for, you know, for God to intervene and help us get back on the right path, path here. So that's the main thing. And I, I don't see any good coming out of another Obama administration. I'm sorry. I don't hate the man. I don't hate anybody. But I just, I, it, I do not see his policy working at all. Well, look, Obama has openly said he wants a world government. And he doesn't believe in individual liberty. He is a tyrant. And I look at now a leaked army document. Obama had him set up a plan for re-education camps in America. And this just broke yesterday, so you probably haven't seen it. Uh, but then I have this video of, um, breaking down Bill Ayers, who was for re-education camps. That came out in the federal court. And he, of course, was, was Obama's mentor. But to learn that they're trying to get the army, and that's why this leaked, the army doesn't like it, to prepare to basically round up political dissenters, that means us, and re-educate us. Boy, I tell you, th th this is, what do you think of that if it's true, Charlie? I know you haven't had a chance to see it yet. I think it's going to be a hell of a war in this country, exactly what I think. I, you know, I, you, you, can't, you can't stand still for this. There's no way you can stand still for this. They're going to come, that's what I was talking about, the midnight knock on the door. What's the difference between here and, 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 and Soviet Union if we, if we do that? That's what they do in China. That's what they do in North Korea. That's what they did in the Soviet Union back in the old Iron Curtain days. That is not America. That We cannot allow that to happen in America. And anybody who promotes that, Obama, Holder, whoever, needs to be gone. They do not need to be in any position of power at all. That's what we've got to do somehow. We've got to get away from these, these people that give me society. Sir, but uh, we're about to go to break, but there is some good news. A record numbers of guns are being sold, 5 million in one month a few months ago. The American people say it's because they don't trust this president and this government. So I think the system needs to understand that. Well, I think we need to understand it, too. And i tell you what, it, if it, anything to do with guns, they go, well, I'm, I'm, I live in Tennessee, and, and people treasure their guns there. And, you know, I mean, for hunting and target shooting and stuff, and protection. But it ain't going to go well in my party country at all. It's not going to go down good. Yeah, we know. Tennessee, the volunteer state, helped found Texas. And Tennessee's thrown bad governments out before. <laughs> we'll be right back. Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com. All right, Charlie's with us another 20 minutes. Uh, he, he, he'd stay longer, but you know, he's got to get on down the road to play a gig. And I said, hey, listen, we'll get you out here in 20 minutes and you can be off the races. And he said, oh, you don't know how true that is. I'm playing the Kentucky Derby this weekend. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's go to some phone calls uh, here. Jonathan, Michael, John, Patriot, Richard, and others. Jonathan in Texas, you're on the air with Charlie Daniels. Uh, yes, sir. This is uh, glad to speak with you, Charlie Daniels. This is Ed Fox 777. And um, I was wondering, can you by chance assemble a cast to sing about Agenda 21, similar to like they did with We Are the World? We hey, are the listen, world. he's the guy that did the song that, that uh, in America. Oh, I love that song. And then, uh, I mean, so many other patriotic ones. Yeah, uh, we saw that new song that came out by um, Hank Williams Jr., uh, telling Obama where he can go for getting him fired. What about you doing something like that? Well, you know, I kind of take it as it comes. I get to, I get these inspirations to write songs. I don't, uh, 
Uh, that was a unique idea that you came up with there, Jonathan. I hadn't really thought about it in that way. I am very much, I, I want so bad, and, and what we're doing now is good, is to let people know. A lot of people don't know this thing even exists. They have to know what it, it exists. They have to know what's in it. And I believe when they do, we will see some mad people in this country. You could have a song about get your 21 out of here or you're going to get a 21 gun salute. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That probably would happen too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank man. You, yeah, thank you, Jonathan. Oh, uh, man. Michael in Texas, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, gentlemen, it's a pleasure hey, speaking to you. Hey, yes, sir. Uh, big, big fan of yours. Big fan of yours. And, and you know what? You probably hear my Yankee accent. I've only been down here in Texas for a few years, but it's the best thing that ever happened to me, this job transfer. But the thing that, and I'm, I'm asking if you've seen this, even in, in your state, um, people that, you know, all they care about probably is volunteer football and, um, you know, dancing with the stars or even on, you know, CMT, they'll watch them, uh, that version of... of yeah, but there's always Idol. people, I want his answer to this, but there's always people that don't care. It's always been a minority that actually fights for liberty, just like in 1776. Charlie? Yeah, I, I, you know, that's true, but it, it's, it's, if it's a fair enough a minority, you get the majority's attention. You know, the, people don't realize this thing. I, I didn't, I was unaware of the scope of this thing myself, but just a short while ago, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I've been hearing about this global thing going on for a long time, but to get down and get specific about it, they've now put a lot of it in writing as to what it is. Exactly. So, who showed you the proof? Who showed you the proof and turned Charlie I, I Daniels looked loose? On, I, looked, I, looked, I looked stuff on the Internet. I mean, it's there. It's there for you to look. You no, know, I know, but I mean, bit. I'm interested in who, who got you to look because this is what you're talking about. We've got to give people the facts. Well, they got me specifically on Agenda 21 was Chuck Hunterson who did this movie. Because he's really delved into it. He's talked to people that are very familiar with what it is. Uh, the, the, this documentary, this Beyond the Pale Horse, goes into this whole situation. It names names. It names agendas. It names what has happened, how far we have come along, or how far down the trail we are. And some people who uh, explain from their point of view the, the general... I, I'm, his name slips my mind right now. I can't remember. He was head of the uh, special forces. This is a man who has the credentials behind him. That is a, is a great, great American who explains what has happened to this nation insofar as he headed towards socialism is concerned. The steps that were taken in other places where socialism took a hold, the steps that they took, what they did, how they went in, how they started. And it goes through this whole thing, and he sits and stands there and explains it, and you believe him because he's telling the truth. It is because he is a man with the credentials behind him to know what he's talking about. Well said, uh, Michael. Thank you, uh, John, Patriot, Richard, Doris. Everybody, your calls are coming up. Usually, we have calls from all over the country. It's Tennessee and Texas calling today, and Michigan. <laughs> and we got some in Canada. Wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll be. We'll be right back. No, it's awesome. Uh, Charlie Daniels, I'm like a little kid in a candy shop here. This is, this is fun. Ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds? filmmaker has made a new film with Charlie Daniels. Behold a Pale Horse, America's Last Chance, and they do have a great website, beholdapalehorse.tv. So we uh, do have that website for you. Of course, my websites are infowars.com and prisonplanet.com. My film on the Gen 21 and the UN takeover system is Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement. It's free online. Even though you know about this, folks, pay it forward. Get the video online. YouTube, Google, pass it on to others. We also are carrying another film that exposes Gen 21, Farmageddon, eye-popping wake-up call, Los Angeles Times, of how they are harassing farmers, Amish, you name it. They're harassing people for gardens or selling tomatoes now. I mean, they want it shut down. That's available at InfoWars.com. Charlie Daniels of CharlieDaniels.com is our guest. And we were talking during the break. He says he'll come back on with the filmmaker 
uh, of Behold a Pale Horse, so we'll line that up the next month. Excited uh, about that and excited to, to get my copy. I actually got invited to the premiere last week. Like an idiot, didn't go to that either. But it's, it's, it's uh, good to learn all this today. I just knew we were getting Charlie Daniels on, and I'm excited to have him. Anything else, Charlie, before we plunge back into calls in this final segment that is uh, you know, burning in your heart and mine right now that you'd like to relay to the population? Well, just, you know, the, the, the thing about uh, yesterday, I met with a whole bunch of good folks, and we talked about it. it remember, you know, we have one hope, and it is to get back on, get back next to God. That's this country, country was founded on that. And there's a big war on Christians right now. Don't be intimidated by it, because we win this thing in the end. And just, you know, stay with it. Stand up for what you believe in. That's the name of the game. Well, there's a reason the globalists and the communists and the socialists and the collectivists are always trying to henpeck us into shutting up because we've got the power, free market, capitalism, liberty, private property, family, God, country. That trumps the crap, I'm sorry to use that word, they're selling. And and so they want right. to shut us up. You're right. Absolutely. And yeah, well, we don't shut up, are we? <laughs> no. I never shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh let's talk to richard in kansas you're on the air with charlie daniels welcome good to speak with you again alex yes sir hi richard uh, how you doing charlie i'm well thank you um my question to you is um upon reading the undercover of darkness signing of for example the national defense authorization act um, if upon reading that you got the exact same sort of red flag feeling that a lot of us got thinking this is automatically for us, not for other countries. Yeah, let me put it this way. Uh, Obama now says the war on terror is over overseas and Al Qaeda is good uh, going after Libya and, and they're our friend now and Bin Laden's dead. But then he says we're going to expand the TSA. Now they have checkpoints in Texas and in Houston and Dallas where they grope your wife and your family and your children. So, so now they're telling us the war on terror is for the returning veterans and gun owners and libertarians. I don't know if you saw those Homeland Security documents. I did hear about that. I, that is just, that's just a day blame disgrace. I mean, that just, you, you know, I get, you want to get my blood boiling. You start messing with the military and with, with the, with, with the, the veterans. They are, without them, there is no us. And I have been among these people in the last few years, our men and women in uniform, in, in some pretty desolate parts of this world. I want to tell you what, they're the best we've got. The best we got is not on Capitol Hill. The best we've got is in is in the in the uniform of the United States military. They're the best Americans we got. And when I see somebody messing with them, it just makes my, it, it really gets my dander up. Our people who are returning from our wars are heroes and should be treated as heroes. And to even for anybody to even have the arrogance of accusing them after they've gone and put their lives on the line for this country, and somebody comes along and accuses them of being a terrorist, come on, man. Well, the, too far. Well, the person doing that is obviously the un-American terrorist. But, but that shows they want to bring in this Agenda 21. They are scared in these documents. MIAC and Homeland Security, it's, it's made big news. If you're a new listener, folks, this is real. Gun owners, libertarians, conservatives, constitutionalists, but number one, returning veterans. They're teaching police that they're the biggest terror threat. Well, that's just, that's just BS, man. That's just crazy. You know, let me tell you something. America is not stupid. I mean, I guarantee, how many people are going to believe that? That sounds like something out of a fictional novel of some kind. That our returning veterans are terrorists? Come on. Nobody's going to believe that. Nobody does believe that. Of course, there's people that are just sheep that are led around by the nose who believe anything you're told. But people to get up and go to work in the morning and make a living for their family, good god fearing people are not going to believe that. They know that's a bunch of BS. The only people and, that would know, say something like that are people that want to overthrow this country. They come in and say constitutionalists and libertarians and conservatives and veterans are bad. That's what you'd expect, you know, in the 70s of the Russians took over. Exactly. Well, it ain't going to work. We can't let it work. There's too many people out there, man. There's too many. I see too many good people every day. They ain't going to swallow this. Do you agree, Charlie? Oh, that's, the main, that's the thing about educating people about this thing. Please, people, if you're listening to me, don't take my word for it. Don't take Alex's word for it. Don't take anybody's word for it. Prove it to yourself for the sake of your 
children and your grandchildren and yourself and this nation that we all love so much, get on your computer, look up Agenda 21 and find out what it is and what it means and how it's going to, how it's going to affect not just us but the whole world. Do that. Don't take my word for it. You're right. John in Texas, we got to move quick here. We're running out of time with Charlie Daniels. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Hello, Charlie. Hi, Sean. You know, basically, we're, our, we're in the Soviet system right now. It's just soft core because, the, uh, because of the Second Amendment. They can't really get rough, so they're trying to implement it slowly in spots where they can. But the key to all this is the Second Amendment. Once the guns are gone, the velvet glove comes off and the iron fist will come down and we'll be in a red terror that the world will never see. Amen. Amen. You're right. We can't let that happen. That's the thing, that's the thing about it. You know, that, that what scares me more so than anything else about this is one more Supreme Court justice. Stop and think about it. You've got uh, Sotomayor, Mayor, and you've got uh, Elena Kagan. Elena Kagan should not even be on the Supreme Court to start with. She's been... She's too she been helped been write the health care law yes. and is now going to yes. rule on it. That's yes. illegal. Yes. She should, have, she should have been recused. Uh, she, re she should have recused herself. We've got our Constitution is being trampled on by this government and this administration. Charlie, what do you make of Cass Sunstein? Since you said that, Cass Sunstein is the guy they've got lined up. Obama says that'll be his next nominee. Cass Sunstein has said, I'm not kidding, you can pull this up. I can't believe it. He said it. He wrote papers five years ago, four years ago, saying arrest people that don't agree with man-made global warming or at least find them. He is a total authoritarian, and that's who Obama wants. Then they got to come get me, because I think man-made global warming, I don't think man, I, man can't control the climate of this, of this world. That is stupid. If this world is changing, it's God's doing. It's not ours. If it's warming, it's God's doing. It's not man's doing. We can't do it. We can't control it. And, you know, that's just, that's just downright stupid. Anybody that has those kind of preconceptions should not even be allowed to go in the Supreme Court building, much less serve on the Supreme Court. And that's what I'm talking about. That's where, if we aren't careful, Obama's big power is going to come from, is from the Supreme Court. And, and then Congress can sit back and say, well, we didn't do it. Well, yeah, you did. You sit back and let it happen. Amazing. You know, you confirm these idiots. Charlie Daniels is our guest. Uh, thank you so much, uh, John. Patriot in Michigan, you're on the air with Charlie Daniels. Hey, Alex. Hey, Charlie. Uh, it's an honor. Hey, um, Charlie, I, I, Charlie I, would, I would like to commend you for speaking out. Um, I wish more people of your stature would do the same. Um, just a quick little tidbit, Alex. I'd like to say thank you to all of you. Um, we have started speaking out. We have built a social network. Um, we would we would like to invite you all. It's patriotspot.wallfm. Um, it's got a ton of Alex content, full of Agenda 21. Good job, follow. buddy. We appreciate you. Tell us if you got a question for Charlie. Yes, Charlie. Um, what what do you think we should do in in basically in response to the NDAA? Response to the what now? The the National Defense Authorization Act, um, the NDA oh, oh, oh. bill. Um, yeah, what do you make of Obama? Me or him? No, no. I mean, what do you make of Obama? Just to be clear, with NDAA, you know, that's where he says he'll arrest citizens and disappear them if he wants. I think you ought to call your congressman, your senator, and raise hell with them. Tell them they can't come back to state if they let something like this happen. But that's that's a, that's a danger again. The Supreme Court situation. They'll never get that through Congress. There's no way they'll ever get it through Congress, but you wait for the Supreme Court. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's what scares me. That right now is one of my biggest fears in this country is the Supreme Court passing something. And the, the, or, the, or the Congress, the, you know, there's when you don't read bills, if you can't read bills, you got no business up there. You vote for stuff you don't even want the heck it is. That's stupid. That's not America. That's not what they're there for. We need to get squared away here. We need to, We need people who are going to support our Constitution and people who are going to support Supreme Court justices that are not left so far in one direction that they can't possibly think the right way to rule right on things. This thing about arresting people, that ain't going to happen. We can't let that happen. I was about to say that is, is that, is that they put a bunch of degenerates and crooks in so foreign interests can use America like a vending machine. They stick money in, pull the lever, get whatever they want out of it. Uh, let's jam in more calls here in the last few minutes with Charlie Daniels. Doris in Tennessee, you're on the air. Hey, Doris. I'm from Tennessee. I'm in, I'm in Nashville right now. 
Charlie Daniels. Well, bless your heart. Uh, I'm up here in Louisville uh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, I'm really glad to hear you two link up together. I've been a Prison Planet member for uh, since March of 11, and um, I think that um, we are completely being taken over if uh, people don't wake up. And they'll listen to people like you, and this is sort of like the Alamo. Tennessee wouldn't be a Texas without a Tennessee. I call uh, Lamar Alexander. I call Corker all the time. They always tell me exactly what they told you. They will never vote for these things. Now, they just did the transportation and highway thing, and in it was a, a section about firearms. And uh, they they said that he didn't vote for that. I looked up the votes, and they voted yay on it. I don't know. He said, well, he didn't vote for that part. Well, I know this. They're always changing those bills, but what I know is in that bill is that the IRS just says you haven't paid your taxes I mean, I've had them come after me, and I know full well I've got mainline accountants and paying all that you know stupid tax the Federal Reserve. And just for them saying you haven't paid, they take your passport away, which is a right as a citizen. Charlie, what do you think of that? Well, I think it's just another paragraph. You know, it's just like they, they, they just keep coming at you from every direction they possibly can. Well, how about this situation? We're going to make kids under, what was it, 16, quit working on farms? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, that, 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 isn't that brilliant? The best way in the world for kids to learn a work ethic is to get up. Uh, farm kids have the best work ethic. I used to work on a farm when I was a kid. You know, kids that drive, if the kids that are 10 years old on farms do a better job driving a tractor than most people on the highways do with automobiles. That's stupid. Well, here's the so deal. My dad, exactly, my dad grew up on a farm, and I've worked on the family farm we have in ranches nearby. They sent me down, uh, down there for a whole year one time, but the point is, is that that's what teaches you to act like an adult when you're young and teaches you responsibility. And some of the best workers on those farms are children. They're having a good time, and they've got a lot of money in their pockets instead of playing video games or joining gangs. But it shows how they want to destroy parental control over their children. Well, it ain't going to happen. We can't let you. You know, somehow... Some way we got to say our prayers and pull our boat and leave her, and we cannot let this happen. It's obvious that this is a very, a very clear cut deal here that we want to go this way. That Obama is going to take us, and he ain't going to change. It's going to be worse if he gets to take a term. Is it going? Is, is are we going to go this way? We're going to try to go another way. We're going to take a fork in the road. And you know, it's, it's like I don't know anything about. I look like Mitt Romney's going to run. I don't know a whole lot about him, but I know he ain't Obama, and I know. You know, to me, I don't endorse political candidates, but right now, I, I would vote for just about anybody but Obama. You'd vote for Mickey Mouse over Obama? I'd vote for Mickey Mouse in the New York Minute, yeah. <laughs> Let's jam Mickey, man, in fact, we ought to start that. Let's do that. <laughs> Mickey Mouse for president, yeah. <laughs> over Obama. We've got, a Mickey, we've got a Mickey Mouse president now. What's the difference? Yeah. Exactly. Let's jam in a few more for Charlie Daniels, then he's got to go uh, play the uh, Kentucky Derby. Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com. Let's go ahead and talk to Don in Texas. You're on the air, Don. Hello, Alex. I wanted to recommend to you, since you've got a musician you're interviewing today, a song that nobody knows but they think they do, and it's the Star Spangled Banner, The Last Verse. Well, you know what, you're right. It does have a last verse, but the thing about it is when you do it, Nobody wants that last verse because it takes too long and they burn it up network time and they won't get home with the football game, you know? But they, yeah, definitely there's a last verse to it. Can I quickly recite it? Sure, go ahead. 
Oh, thus be it ever when free men shall stand between their loved home and the war's desolation. Blessed with victory and peace, may the heaven-rescued land praise the power that hath made and preserved us a nation. The conquer we must, we must then we win. cause it is just, and thus be our motto, in God is our trust. Yeah, that's why they don't say that. And the star-spangled banner in triumph shall wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Everybody needs to memorize Good that. Good verse. But you notice it says, if our cause is just, you see, and, and, and that's why they want to make us corrupt, because we lose all of our providence once we become corrupt. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you're I'm on the air with the... Uh, I'm sorry, Charlie, go ahead. I said, we're not going to let this happen. We can't let this happen. We're not. Uh, caller, you're on with Charlie Daniels. Did you have a question? No, I just wanted to, since you got a musician on, remind you all of that and all your listeners. Okay. Thank you. Again, we've only got a few minutes left with Charlie. We're going to break here in a second. I want to jam in a few more. He's been very nice. CharlieDaniels.com. But, Charlie, I've got to selfishly ask you a question. Uh, how okay. did you come up with The Devil Went Down to Georgia? And how did you come up with the best fiddle, uh, fiddling I've ever heard? Well, I have to disagree about the well, best feeling because I don't consider myself that. But the way we came up down, down, down to Georgia is a pretty boring story, actually. We had we had written and, re and rehearsed a whole album's worth of, uh, of songs to go in and do an album. And we got in the studio and, and said, that we need a fiddle tune. I don't know why we didn't discover it before we went in, but we said we need a fiddle tune. So we took a break, moved out of the recording studio into a rehearsal studio and wrote the song. I don't know where the idea came from. Uh, I just... You know, it was just, uh, I read an old poem back in high school by Stephen Vince Benet called The Mountain Whipper Will that had to do with fiddling. And it always impressed me because I was a young fiddle player. If that's where the idea came from, but I got this thing. Devil went down to George, and the guy started chipping in, and here we went. And first thing you know, we went back to the studio and recorded it. So it's that, not a great, I, I wish it was a better story about that, but it's actually not. Well, you could always come out with another one, but. Uh... Let me ask you this, then. It's kind of a uh, right stuff question where they say, well, who was the greatest fighter pilot you ever knew? And he was about to say Chuck Yeager, but he said himself. Uh, who do you think is the greatest fiddle player, living or not living? Johnny Gamble uh, is hard to beat. Uh, I know you're familiar with him. Yes. Uh, there's a couple of guys on the operator that are uh, Hugh Hester. It's an excellent fiddle player. The best uh, hoedown fiddle player right now, in my opinion, is Earl White, who plays with the square dancers on the opera. Hoedown fiddle is almost a lost art uh, nowadays because there's, you know people don't square dance that much anymore on a grand scale. And uh, some of the guys that I run into on the road once in a while, some of these young guys are really, really good. I play, kids ask me about playing fiddle. I say, don't look at me. I hold the bow wrong. I hold the fiddle wrong. I put too much pressure on the bow. You know, but that's my style, but it may not work for you. Now, you're running your body and think you're crazy. Don't do it. I don't read music, so I just do it however I want to. All right, I'm going to jam in two more calls, but, folks, you've got to just ask your question. We've got to go because we've got about two minutes left here. Uh, let's talk to Charles in Rhode Island. Charles, you're on the air with Charlie Daniels. Greetings and salutations. Hi, talk show host extraordinaire, freedom friend, uh, Mr. Daniels. Basically, this is my question. Do you really understand the real crux of the situation here? Up until 1951, 90% of the people paid income tax. The government did something very smart in making people invest in the government. So, therefore, the mindset is they got to collect that check, at, you know, from the government for the Social Security. Brother, listen, I can put you on hold and come back to you after break because we've only got a minute or so left. Do you have a question? Yeah, the question is, do you understand that that's what the real mindset is? That's the kind of strong... Uh, I'll put him on hold. Uh, Charlie, he's saying the, the income tax is unconstitutional. We didn't get it till 1913. What's your take on that? Well, you know, I, I, don't, I don't mind paying tax. I mean, I don't mind paying... You know, there's no taxes in the jungle, as they always say. I don't mind paying tax, but I don't like paying exorbitant taxes, and I, don't, I think we should have a lot more say about how they're spent. Uh, I don't like our money think, being used against us. Flat, I think we should have a flat tax across the board. And, you know, no deductions, no nothing. The IRS is way too big. Don't need that many people up there doing that. Give us a flat tax. We can figure your own income tax. 10%, okay, fine. You're 10% of this, that, send it in, be done with it. Well, that's the big thing about the income tax is that it, 
you can go to 50 CPAs, Money Magazine's done this, you get 50 different answers. It's written so they can claim you did something wrong. Let's uh, talk to, last caller, Lauren in Ohio, a 770 AM listener. Lauren, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, guys, just want to say bless you. Um, the reason we shouldn't have any tax on the fruit of a man's labor. What does our declaration say if, that the government was being developed for? To protect life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You're not, you, the, God is the creator. The one that creates is the one that has the right to control. He gave No, I hear you. Do you have a question will. for Charlie? Yeah, but I'm trying to get to the solution. But we have to stop obeying these people when he's talking no, about I hear the you. of the Supreme Court. I hear you. I hear you, and I appreciate your call. Well, it's going to come to people saying no and stop complying. Uh, Charlie, we've got a minute left. Uh, any any closing comments for America out there listening? I'd just like to say I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, getting to meet you long distance here, and I've, I've really enjoyed your show, and I, I enjoy talking to your listeners. And you're doing a great work. You know, keep it up and just inform keep you know keep people up with what's going on and. Because there's so much stuff that you're not getting on the mainstream media. And let's fight this thing. I mean, you know, I'm here. Y'all are there. Let's, let's just let you, you're letting your voices be heard today. How you feel. Don't, you know, do it in the local workplace. You're do right. Wherever you are. Let, you're right. Let your I mean, voice be heard. We can do this together. We can turn this country around. Look at you taking time out to fight tyranny. Charlie Daniels, thank you so much, sir, for the time. CharlieDaniels.com. All right. God bless you. We're going to come back with calls, a ton of news, and a lot more on the other side. That was Charlie Daniels. We twisted his arm into a whole hour. We'll be right back. Stay with us for the big news and information. Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at InfoWars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Does doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure. But if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139.